Now this just came through the mail and uh, yes, I've made a purchase and not actually a big one. It's uh, I got a good deal on it to be honest and it's of course a mystery. So let's see what's inside. I'm curious about this if it you know, works or not because I got it untested. The only thing that has been tested is that it powers on. So here we have an Amiga power adapter, which has got a funky switch. Now here is an Amiga 500, the Simpsons edition. Yes, this needs retro <laughs> really badly. I need to, I'm gonna have to um, bite the bullet and not shy away from retro writing stuff anymore because I've got no choice here. I want to hug it, but it needs to be decontaminated because I don't know where it's been. <laughs> Let's see if it, because I don't even know if it works. The dude just said it powers up and that's it. That's all he tested. And um, I need to check. I'm gonna check if it's got the RAM. I, I, as far as I know, it doesn't. Well, I'm assuming it doesn't. I know it doesn't. I'm gonna need that. Look, okay, so here I am. I put the TV around. I just, it's just like a spare SCART TV, which I have. Uh, actually, it was what I was using when I first, in, in my early Amiga 1200 videos. Now this I borrowed from the Amiga 1200. Okay. Green freaking thing. Why? Okay, I knew the cords at some point. Green and that's like flicking on and off. So let's see what the freak that is. Uh, it does not look like great news. <laughs> to be honest, apparently it's some error with the chip RAM according to um, the codes you know if it's a green screen uh, then there's something some issue with the chip RAM. I discovered that the green screen is a memory issue and while searching I also came across Gadget UK164's video on the Amiga 500 and he explains about the green screen in much more detail and the other things that could cause it. If you are stuck with this issue, I recommend watching his video as it's very informative. Okay, some people were saying to lift some of the chips out and contact clean them, things like that. So, okay, the next stage of this is gonna be going inside it. I hate this, it's got those stupid star screws. Curse whoever invented these stupid freaking star screws. There's no purpose for them. They only need to be thrown in hell and melted. Okay, I got a straight ahead screwdriver that's just the right size to wedge in between freaking something so I managed to, you know, take them out. Thank god. Whoops, I broke the button DCO. I miss the freaking construct of the 500 to be honest. More freaking star screws. Now disconnect the floppy drive just in case there's a short that it's creating or dodgy cable or anything like this. I'm, I've discovered that you can actually swap the CIA chips and um, then you can determine you know if, if that's the issue here. So let's kind of swap these two around. They're basically the same chip apparently. So let's kind of like mark one. Okay so that's the um, odd CIA and this is the even CIA. Basically the one um, controls the joystick parts and all that the other one controls the serial part or all part. Okay, so let's turn this on and see what results we get. Same thing. So, take two. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's been a week, it's a week later and uh, a lot has been happening around here Amiga-wise and also, you know, my health has taken a bit of a a turn south so do excuse my voice I don't sound the best today but um, I will try my best in sounding you know presentable at least <laughs> anyway okay so last time as you probably have seen you know we were messing with this guy so I contacted the seller about this and um, it's completely goofed uh, without you know, a sec without a blink, he, he offered a refund and uh, he actually said that you can keep it. He must have been trying to get rid of them or something and didn't realize how bad the shape they were. So that was very kind of him and I'm, you know, appreciative of that. I'm sure I can use it for spare parts uh, and keep it safe somewhere. And, or, you know, even if a friend of mine needs some spare parts or something, you know, I can always, you know, I have this. However, at the same time, 
more knife and I are excited. <laughs> And also Lemmy is here to join us. I have the theme song to Lemmings stuck in my mind <laughs> because um, I had just finished uh, doing the video of um, Lemmings, the one you one you saw on Chill Out Time or Chill Out Stroke Nostalgia Time. Okay, so in the space of this week, I have um, I became lucky twice. Well, yeah, I had said twice since it was given to me. First 500 and. This just came in today. God, that's heavy. <laughs> this just came in today. So, um, there's a, another unboxing in this video, which is... Yay! <laughs> we like unboxings, don't we, Moon Knife? God, make me sound like I've completely lost it talking to my freaking knives. <laughs> that, I don't wanna, you know, talk in the knives. <laughs> And not only this, there is another thing that came along with it, and that is an extra little surprise. So, um, oh man, <laughs> I need a bag. <laughs> I guess it's like shredded. I mean, it's a nice way to recycle, but. <laughs> First thing we notice is some goodies here. This makes me smile. <laughs> yeah, that. Right, and what made me smile was the Deluxe Paint 2 disc, which I remember having ages ago, the key disc. <laughs> and the original Amiga Workbench uh, disc set. I actually still have our original one. Jumping Jacks in this one. <laughs> Cool. And I got a, a Kamana drive. I already have one of these, but this one again is a second one, which is nice to have. The 500 itself, and uh, yes, there is no power supply, which kind of worked out well. The first one came with a power supply, <laughs> which works. So let's hope this one is working. I know you don't want to part with the box, but you can have to say goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> I know I was comfy in there, but I'm gonna give you a comfortable place, okay? Not to worry, this is your new home. Okay, for sure this is in a much better condition. There's only like a touch of yellow in it. And yes, I'm aware the sun is shining on it. Even though my windows do have um, UV blocker on them. Just a thin layer of it. Yes, this definitely seems this one definitely seems in much better condition than this one. <laughs> Apparently the internal drive doesn't work that great. Um, sometimes some discs it doesn't load. Uh, it probably needs a clean. If not, I have the disc drive uh, from this one which does work. I did get another um, RCA, RCA. Well, yeah, it kind of was. I did get another um, RGB to SCART adapter for this. Because I don't want to keep stealing my, uh, you know, the one from my poor 1200. <laughs> I borrowed it last time. Let's turn it on and hope for the best. <laughs> please, please, please. Yay! We got that working. Green light one. Okay, let's try and load a disc. See if it works. It's not a workbench disc that it came with. Okay, so let's see. Okay, well, that might just be the disc. Deluxe pain. Okay, the drive sounds screwed. <laughs> right. See, this 500 has got those same, you know, crosshead screws. It doesn't have those stupid freaking star screws that came from hell and deserve to go back there. Whoopsie. There's two warranty seals I've broken this week. 
Good thing is we get to see the board revision, which revision of A500 this is. Not that I know the difference of the revisions. I know a little bit about the 1200s, a bit more, but not so much about the revisions of the 500s. If anybody knows the differences between the revisions, what each has as a, you know, what characteristic each has, then do please, or any info on it or site on it that explains it, please do share in the comments below. Another warranty seal I'm breaking. Deary, deary me. Please have the yes! It does, it has the half meg board. The other one didn't. So it's one megabyte in this. Oh, for freak's sake, these stupid star screws! I have one straight head that perfectly fits them. Yes. Freaking beat you, stupid star screws. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna. The stupid shielding. I'm tempted to just like throw it away. I threw the other one away. Because it's just annoying. <laughs> and second thought, I might actually um, keep this, this um, shielding. Because, um, you know, it's just. It's not like I'm gonna be opening it. Every day, <laughs> like I do with my <laughs> 1200. <laughs> Almost. I really hate being ill. But then again, who loves it? Actually, I have I have to say something. This for shielding. This has to be the best quality shielding I've ever seen in an um, in an Amiga. Both 500 and 1200 and 600. This is the um the best shielding quality i've ever seen is this some sort of premium shielding which this person paid for <laughs> i don't know it's fantastic okay this is the revision 6a i'm not sure what the other one was but this is a revision 6a <laughs> and the the board just seems immaculate it's just the floppy drive which i'm curious as to why it's doing what it's doing so it's not just about replacing it i want to see you know, what, what's up with this? Why is it being like that? Hmm, artwork number. Well, I definitely say this is a work of art. <laughs> Unless it's talking about the stickers someone's trying to make artwork with. <laughs> well, to be honest, this seems to be fine. What I'll do is I will clean the heads with uh, isopropyl alcohol and I'll oil this um, mechanism. Because all I need connected for this is the power. And that's it. Because I just need to just put a disc in and, and it should be, should be able to see if it works or not. Okay, let's put this in. Let's see if we've revived this disc drive. No, we have not. Okay, so this <coughs> is the um, Panasonic drive. And this is the Chinon. This is the one that doesn't work. And this is the Chinon. I mean, you can tell they are different, um, quite different in how they build. It's actually not that much different to a audio cassette head and how it works. It's just a coil of wire and some magnetic material. everything together again and um freaking humpty dumpty comes back again <laughs> anyway um and all that stuff i do now is turn it on and test that of course <laughs> let's get a workbench disc first and uh, load that in oh the a500 disc drive just sounds different it has a unique Sound. The other ones don't sound like this. Oh, you can do female. Let's try male first. Hello, she is Miss Mad Lemon. <laughs> Let's do the female one. Hello, I am Miss Mad Lemon. That doesn't sound like me. <laughs> That's not female. You 
free skin, free bad boy. Okay, let's try a game that's really old. I tend to use this game as a reference um, because it will only work on the old 500. It doesn't even work on 600. It's called Artificial Dreams. Let's see if this works. Because it does say that, you know, take away the fast room. So. And it's like you cannot even collect things. It's like what you're collecting. It's just you're just going over. <laughs> See, that's how you collect stuff. But it makes me nostalgic, even though it's a crap game. <laughs> but I prefer this more than the Atari ST version. Tell you that. Let's try another game before I get too carried away with this. At least that works. Oh, I know what to try. My um, games compilation discs, I have lots. And uh, these, I saved the ADFs from way back. So I made these them back then. The, <laughs> the um, disc compilations. So, let's try... Let's try Jumpman Jr. Jumpman Jr. on the Amiga version is... I love it. <laughs> it's just funny. The sound effects make the game. <laughs> I drew all these. Oh, I'm free. It took me so long putting all these freaking compilations together. I drew all these in Deluxe Pen as well. <laughs> but I was like, back then I went through a phase. I was like obsessed with putting um, thingies together. A compilation of games and putting my name on everything. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh my god. I used, to laugh. I used to be like laughing and cackling while playing this. Never gets me. <laughs> I hate this level. Freaking fire. So annoying. One pixel! <laughs> Sounds like someone's frying eggs. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, it mix whatever it is mixes with the sound of falling. Okay, so always let's put the uh, Avenger Mega Demo in. <laughs> because, don't forget, we have another package. So we have the second package here. This I have uh, Yeah, I is definitely what I think it is. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is I think those of you who already know, who know me, 
well know what this is because I've been going on about it for <laughs> a while. Yes, it is an Amiga Action Replay MK3. And I'm so excited about this because, oh, I haven't seen this for ages. I mean, I didn't have the MK3 one, I had the MK2 version, which, um, you know, it's, ooh, it comes with a, it comes with a manual and in the future, I'm going to do an entire episode on uh, Action Replay and how it works. Slot this into the side. Switch that on. Okay, so let's try. Slow everything down completely. Slowing the clock down on you and the CPU. For now it's working and that's why I'm happy about it. So Okay, so that is all for today. I have my Amiga 500 bag. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Because it's like uh, my first love. <laughs> okay, so that is all for today. Um, unfortunately there is no cousin Ayman who <laughs> was with me last time when I was um, unboxing my 1200. If you wish to see that video, it's in the description or, you know, in this letter I here. <laughs> this letter I here. Um, and uh, that's the unboxing. You know, I did uh, this around this time last year of my 1200. Anyway, so thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below and uh, do check out my other videos and don't forget to subscribe for more. For now I will say, well Lemmy and I will say adios!